So Connor, yesterday we talked a little bit off camera and we were talking about um, your relationship with Donald Cerrone and how it's really friendly in the lead up to this fight. And it's something we haven't seen in your fight weeks for a long time, but for you, what is it like to not have to have this crazy animosity between your opponent? No, even if I do have that kind of animosity, I still feel the same. Like I'm getting ready for a bout, a fight, you know what I mean? It's it's the same feeling. It's nice, you know, I've, I've, like I said, I respect for Donald. And it's a welcome change for people, I suppose. For me, I still feel the same inside, you know. It's gonna be a, it's gonna be an intense bout, and I'm gonna bring everything I have. I think it might be a little bit different for us seeing this because you seem to be almost like Connor from years and years ago. You know, you're so um, happy with all these different media outings, and you seem to be genuinely enjoying everything that's going on during fight week. How is that translating then for you throughout all the obligations that you have? Yeah, I'm, ha I'm happy. I've executed all the all the obligations they've asked this this time, and it's been. A pleasant camp this time, and it's led me to look. I want to be here. That's it, I suppose, right? And I'm just excited to be here. Excited to be back, and people want to hear from me, right? People must hear from me. I've got. I'm in a position where I can't just stay quiet, right? So I'm happy to be back and to discuss my thoughts and my feelings and my plans with the people. Yeah, and you're back with coaches we've seen you with for a long time, and also you brought in your boxing coach from Crumlin, yeah. correct? Can you just tell me how how that sort of came about and why you felt it was important for this fight? Um, well, there was a charity event uh, the, we have in, in Crumlin. We have a Good Friday show. It's like a, it's a boxing event that we have in the club. And oh, it's, wow. it's, it's well known in, in the club. It's one of the only places you could get alcohol in, in, <laughs> in, in Ireland at the time. On that day, on Good Friday. Sure. But uh, uh, it, it's supposed to be packed and it's a good thing. It's good for charity and that and for the community. And I, I went down to have a bout on it. I, I rang them up and said, I'd like to go down and have a match. I, I boxed on it many, many times on the, on the climb when I was a young kid. I went down, had a great uh, match off a good, a good young prospect, and, and that was it. I just had to build that relationship again with, with my former coaches, and, and uh, they were in my corner. So it was, uh, and for a boxing bout as well, I would have loved them to be in for the Mayweather corner as well. But I just felt I could use their knowledge, and I need, I need, I, and I need their knowledge. So it was a good, uh, good return back. Do you feel like going back to those roots, you also found something in yourself as well? Yeah, so I'm always close to my roots, always connected to my home. But for whatever reason. I drifted away from the boxing scene, right? I mean, it's mixed martial arts and mm -hmm. boxing, and it's, for a while, it's always been loggerheads, right? It's always one against the other, and I kind of felt that on the come up, that the, that the Irish boxing scene had a disdain for me. And then that's why when the Mayweather belt was happening, then everyone kind of sided with Floyd, <laughs> and I was like, oh, I'm not going to do it. I'm just going to focus on my own training. And you've mentioned throughout the week how much you like fighting in Las Vegas. You called it your second home. Um, you do come out early, and it seems like you've really been utilizing all of the things that are um, here for you in terms of the, the training at the PI, physical yes, therapy, the recovery, oh, all amazing. of those things. It's absolutely amazing. I can understand why so many fighters, once they get signed to the UFC, just move shop to Las Vegas, because why wouldn't you? The Ultimate Fighting Championships Performance Institute, it's a phenomenal center. You've got the physical therapy, you've got, you've got the mats, you've got the ring, you've got the cage, you've got all the strength equipment. All the cardio equipment, it's a phenomenal place, and I'm very, very grateful that I can, they allow me to use it. And long may I continue. You talked about that LeBron James quote is about how he spends so much money on his own well-being. Mm -hmm. um, for you, is that why the, the PI is so vital for you then, so close to a fight? Yeah, damn right. I mean, look, so I was trained, we were training there the other day, and someone got injured as part of my camp in a session. Straight away, it was like the first thing I said, you're in the right place. Mm -hmm. Went down, saw a head of the physical therapist, got looked after, and back, not, He's back almost, almost back to himself now, you know what I mean? And it was, an, it was a big enough injury, so it's a phenomenal place. I'm very grateful for it. Yeah. Um, you mentioned that there's mats and there's a boxing ring and there's all that going on. Um, when it comes to the mats and the grappling, um, one of your training partners, Dylan Dana, said that you're one of the best MMA grapplers he's ever gone with. Certainly a lot of people are talking about, oh, Cerrone should take this to the ground. He should take this to the canvas. For you, are you almost looking to be able to finally display that part of your abilities in this matchup? Um, you know, I think I've displayed it. I think it's a narrative people run with. It's a, it's a, it's an easy, it's an easy thing to go to, right? Um, before the Eddie Alvarez fight, right? Donald said he should just take him down, submit him, and be done with it. That's that. So now he's kind of changing his tone, <laughs> you know. But my grappling is phenomenal. My my mixed martial arts grappling is phenomenal, and I'm I'm prepared for it. So. Whatever happens, happens. I would certainly be, I don't think I'd be happy with it. No, I would like a submission, right? I've got one submission on my record, but you can't beat the knockout. There's yeah. nothing that beats a good old fashioned knockout. So. <laughs> he said he wants a war. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I'm ready for a war if he wants a war, you know? If he can sustain it, good for him.
All right, so you've got fights on your plate, obviously preparing for this one. You talk about the 2020 season that you want to have. You've also got all these business ventures, you're a father. In terms of how you prioritize things and how you make time for everything you're involved with, what is that like for you, being able to sort of schedule out the levels of importance you mm. put to things? It's for me, I just love everything I'm involved in. That was one of the things that I don't, right? I, uh, the things that I love and, and the things that I'm, I'm passionate about, I turn them into businesses and, and revenue streams. And so for me, it's not even like work or not like, I've got to, it's just me living my life, right? So I'll get on a call or uh, with the design team at August McGregor, or I'll be on a call with the whiskey people or I'll ring, I'll be ringing uh, the people that we, we are selling the whiskey to that are buying the whiskey, you know? And then obviously training every day. And it's just my life, so it doesn't feel like I, so obviously, certain times I'll have to prioritize sure. things over, over over others, but thankfully I'm in a position where I'm in control of it all. Right? Uh, fighting now takes precedence. So my other ventures and my other partners in, in my other businesses, they understand that. So everyone's very understanding, and that's where we're at. And we even saw you at some football games mm. with Proper 12. <clears throat> what were yeah, those was experiences the like for you? Yeah, amazing. It's good to be at the football game. So it's it's crazy to see the support that the American people have for football. You know, it's. <laughs> yeah. I was actually I, I done a talk with a guy from a college game and the college the football, national game. Yeah, it's apparently even there's more even people in attendance than the main games, like the NFL games. That's that's amazing, like truly amazing. No wonder amazing athletes come from this part of the world. So because they have that support network, so it's great to see. Could you ever see your son playing football? American football? Yeah. I don't know about American. <laughs> you know, he'd certainly be able for it. He'd certainly be built for it. Actually, t funny enough, today before I came here. We had this American football and we were throwing it playing it in the grass. So you See? never know. Yeah, you never know. But he's always talking about not, I'm knocking down with the ball and all. That's what he's always talking about knocking down. <laughs> he's into the fighting. And we do like football as well, soccer, we call it. But I mean, you never know. You never know. Look, whatever my son wants to do, whatever my children want to do, they will have the backing of their father. You know, I, I will be behind them, fully supporting them. I'd love them to get into the fight game, but if not, that's no problem. That's the best thing any child can ask for from their parent. I'm um, speaking of your kids. You know, yesterday you said, um, I can read Donald Cerrone like a children's book. So that being said, what what's the favorite children's book to read to your kids? <laughs> well, maybe I was just reading a children's book and that was in my head. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I'll tell you what, we like, we, we like all stuff, right? Junior's loving. Actually, he changes a lot through things, like Paw Patrol and, you know what I mean? Toy Story, Peppa Pig. It was Peppa Pig for a while. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's fun just watching him. Watching him do his thing and watching the things that he's engaged with. He's a true, he's a little boy, like he's a real boy. So it's a lot of fun. Yeah, are, are you the dad that's sitting down with them and, and getting invested into the storylines of these shows and oh, stuff? Sometimes you get caught up in it. <laughs> I like Toy Story, I have to say. I do like Toy Story, it's good. <laughs> All right, speaking of movies, um, we wanted to ask you, award season, are there are there any things that you loved in terms of movies you saw this year? Um, you know, the Grammys are in a couple of months. Music, mm. TV shows that you mm. have be binge watched, anything? Yeah. You know, the Grammys are actually this, this next week, are they? Yeah. Oh, are they? Oh, in I think You're we're going to it. I think we're going to the Grammys. Okay, Baller. You're always just bragging to me about Ballers, that's a good show. Do. Ballers is a good show. Oh, the there Rock. You go. <laughs> the Rock's a good man. He's got, he's, he's a hard, he's, that's a hard working man, oh, the, yeah. the Rock. Well, we know that you watch so many fights, and, and because it's award season, I just asked you about that. What would your awards be for this year? Is there a fighter that stood out for you, a performance that stood out for you, a fight that you thought, you know what, in 2019, that was, that was really great. That was great for our sport. I think there's been many, many breakout people this year, right? For me, I think Israel Adesanya was phenomenal, right? He came out with the entrance and it was a big stadium in Australia. He had a unification bout against a phenomenal fighter in Robert Whittaker, and um, beating up that part of the world. And I'd probably put Izzy as, uh, as, my, as my number one for, for last year. You keep track of all these fights, though, Yeah, of huh? course, of course. Do you feel like you can take away from what you see in other people's performances, little tricks or, or things that of you course, can bring into yes, your own game? Yes, you always analyze the game, always analyze the skill sets, more so than anything else. I know the media bring up everything else, but the fighters should always analyze the in-octagon activities, and that's what I analyze very closely and add and subtract, Bruce Lee style. So add what is useful, subtract what is not. I love that. So will we see any of any new tricks maybe? Yeah, of course. I'm certainly, I'm certainly fighting a lot different, a lot more a lot more centered and structured. And I'm moving differently. You'll see on, on Saturday. Excellent. Well we can't wait. Thank you Thanks so much, Megan. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>